Hi, I'm George Hussey, Dr. 914 from Automobile Atlanta, and today I'm going to give you a tour of the 914 engine compartment relay board. As you can see, I have one in my hand, totally stripped of all of its accessories, and I have the back of it exposed as well, so you can get a good look at both. Years ago, in fact, back in 1977, on my way home from the shop, and this was before I had a shop, that was at somebody else's shop, I was driving my 914, which had very, very few miles on it, going down the interstate and suddenly it just died. And I pulled over to the side of the road and I had no idea what was going on. The fuel pump circuit had failed, but me back then looking at the relay board, it was way too sophisticated. So I had to have the car towed to a shop who then they didn't know what they were doing either and they hot wired the fuel pump. Well, these days we don't have to do that anymore. And by a brief tour of this relay board, you can not strand yourself on the side of the road like I did and quick fix and drive home. I'm going to discuss the 914 four cylinder relay board as they only made maybe 35, 3600 six cylinders, but that relay board is totally different and not as significant in reaction to the car as is the four cylinder relay board. So we're going to start with a stripped four cylinder relay board so I can show you the different pieces and where the accessories plug in. And I'm going to use my handy test light and don't ever be without a 12 volt test light to point out some of the things and in no particular order. These three pins are where the alternator plugs in to go into the regulator, which plugs in right here. This is the front harness connector from the main harness, which feeds the relay board. This is the rear plug for the rear window defroster, which very few cars are equipped with. This is a dummy fuse block, which would be for Sportomatic if so equipped, and they only made four Sportomatics or so, so this was never really used. This is the fuse holder, 25 amp fuse in it for the rear window defroster, and the fuel pump and the auxiliary air valve. This is the relay for the rear window defroster, the relay plug. This is the main power relay for the fuel injection. This is the auxiliary relay from the fuel injection for only the fuel pump. And this relay is for the rear window defroster, the rearmost in the relay board. This is the front of the car, this is the rear of the car. This is the ignition harness connector, which goes to the coil and to the auxiliary air valve and goes back to the starter and also goes to the reverse light switch. This is the plug-in for the control unit on one sevens and two liters only. This is the holder for the harness. And then if we turn this upside down, we can see the circuits here. Notice very few are soldered. This is the rudimentary integrated circuit and once they plumbed it with a copper, they covered it with tar and non-conductive tar, of course, and then just soldered some joints. These rarely fail. So don't ever accuse the relay board of causing your 914 problem. We have many people send these into us for uh, rebuild and we clean it up and we solder resolder the circuits that really probably don't need it and the relay board probably wasn't bad to begin with but then we coat it with our nice uh, new tar and clean it up and put dielectric grease and uh, contact oil and make it all conduct electricity good again and you're ready to go. Usually what happens with these is somebody puts a heavier fuse in here than 25 amp and the fuel pump starts to draw too much energy like it's going to go bad and then that melts the fuse so the terminal here melts and then the relay board does go bad and this you can see is riveted on here. Next I'm going to show you a fully loaded board. So here is the fully loaded 172 liter relay board. A little daunting when you take the relay board cover off and look in and see all of these gizmos but you've already seen it stripped like I first showed you so a little less daunting now. Four relays like we'd spoken about. And notice these relays have no notation on the top. These are 
aftermarket relays that I purposely plugged in here to show you the difference. These are made in China and are truly aftermarket and sometimes can't be trusted. What is best to get always, and I have a used one here, is the Porsche Triangle Whirly made in Germany. They don't make them in Germany anymore. Even the new Whirlies are made in China, but they are far superior to these cheap aftermarket relays, although more expensive. When we're trying to diagnose a problem, if you can't depend upon a new part to help you in your diagnosis, the part's worthless. That's why I highly recommend that you buy Whirly factory relays. And if you can get the German ones like this used one, great. If not, the new Whirlies that too are made in China. The two fuses here are both 25 amp. We use this fuse holder just for an extra 25 amp fuse and then this is the, like we said, the fuel pump and heater blower and auxiliary air valve fuse. Alternator harness coming from the back of the alternator plugged in. Ignition harness which goes over again to the coil and then back to the reverse lights. The main wiring harness, as you can see here, I don't like to chop wiring harnesses just to show you how something plugs in, so I dragged one from the back. Main wiring harness coming in here and the voltage regulator. Notice the voltage regulator is a um, tall Bosch unit. The new ones that are made are very, very short with uh, integrated circuit and they're just fine but there are many other aftermarket voltage regulators that first don't plug in or don't put out the correct voltage. So you have to be aware of those, very aware of those. The regulation of this will give you 13.6 to 13.9 volts. If it's any more than that, we know that it's overcharging, it'll boil the acid out of the battery and before you know it, you'll have rust in the right rear portion of the 914. So always check to make sure that the voltage is correct. Those of you with the appearance group console have a voltmeter that registers. Those without, you can put a voltmeter across the battery terminals and tell. For you 1.8 owners, 74, 75 relief. Look at how less complicated this relay board is. That's because the 1.8 has the superior, more modern fuel injection system in it and doesn't need as many connections. We have the same alternator, the same voltage regulator, the same front. This fuse only works the rear window defroster now. The fuel pump circuit is out of the picture and the auxiliary air valve is out of the picture. No relays here except optional rear window defroster if you happen to have that. And the later the cars went, the fewer had the rear window defroster option. The ignition harness which is right here and the 1.8 ignition harness had the fuel pump relay on the other side of it and the yellow lead which provided power to the fuel injection system in the starting mode. That's why it has this plug plugged into the right rear. That's how simple the 1.8 is and again rear window, excuse me, the rear blower motor that's now in the engine compartment. The early cars had the blower motor mounted on top of the engine, which had to go through the rear harness connector. The late models had a jumper to where it went back through the relay board into the main harness and down to the blower motor mounted on the left engine shelf. What I'm gonna do now is sh show you a simple test to check for fuel pump operation. That is the weak link in the 1.7 and 2 liter fuel injection system. The fuel pump stops running, nothing happens, you're stranded on the side of the road. Usually it's because either the rear fuse here, the rear 25 amp fuse, loses its connection or one of these relays corrodes or goes bad. I've stripped the relay board now down so that you can see this a little bit better. And I've also pried the top off of the rear harness connector, leaving it plugged in. So my car is stranded on the side of the road and I don't know what's wrong. Remember on the 1.7 two liter cars, when you first turn the key on, you should hear the fuel pump run and stop. If you do not, the car is not gonna start. No way, no how. So 
You're stranded on the side of the road, like I said, the fuel pump's not running, you don't know what's wrong. It's extremely important to always have an extra relay that you know works and some fuses and a nice test light and a jumper wire. A jumper wire is always good to bypass certain areas. I don't have one here, but I'm not gonna use one today. So I have the red 16 amp fuses, I have the blue 25 amp fuses, and I have the white eight amp fuses. Not for the relay board, but just in general for the car. First thing I do is with my test light, I ground my test light and I touch it to the positive terminal of the battery to make sure my test light works. And then I take the test light and I go to the terminal here. I don't go to the fuse because the fuse may not be making connection. I go to this terminal to make sure the test light lights. This is where the power comes in. And then I go to the other side of the terminal to make sure the power is actually flowing through the fuse. If you have power here and you do not have power here, then the fuse is either bad or not making connection. A lot of people say, oh, my fuse is good. And it's really not making connection, even though the fuse is good and they, don't, they, they overlook it. Well, you need to make sure that the fuse is both good and making connection. So that's the first thing we do. We have parked an extra 25 amp fuse here, just in case you need an extra one. And we also can park a relay here if you don't have a rear window defroster, so you have an extra one that you know is good. So I verified that my fuse is good. And the next thing I do is I go, I'm gonna take this out just so you don't get confused. I go to the main power relay, third one in from the back, one, two, three. And I have the key on and I take this out and I plug it in and I take this out and I plug it in and I take this out and I plug it in. Every time I do that, I should hear the fuel pump run momentarily and stop. And two of the injectors click. The trigger points are either closed on uh, one and four or closed on three and two. So you can hear the two injectors click as you plug this main power relay back in. If you don't hear anything, you want to check this relay right away. And you can check this relay easily by removing the rear window defroster relay. The key is on now and you've disconnected the condenser lead so you won't burn the points out. Pull the heater lever up, know that the blower motor in the engine compartment is running, and then pull this relay and put it back in. Blower motor works again. So now you've got a place to check these relays. So we take each relay and check it. We take the fuel pump relay, we plug it in there and check it. Take the main power relay, plug it in there and check it. And we take the defroster relay if you want to check it so we know we have good relays. I'm gonna plug these back in here because one, you can't have one without the other working. So I verified that all my relays are good and I still don't hear any clicks at all. If I don't hear any clicks at all, the relay is good, I will go to the back of the block and look at the ground connection. Something is not grounded. If I hear the main relay clicking, but I still don't hear the fuel pump running, then I would go to the front harness connect. Now remember, I've verified that the fuel pump relay is good. If one of these relays, usually by now you've got it running because one of the relays was not making connection. It was corroded in here. You've cleaned it. You're back on your way. But if not, we pry off the front harness connector and the left front pin, which was black and red, this goes right down to the fuel pump and comes right off this fuel pump relay. So I'm leaving the fuel pump relay in place, putting my test light here, and then I am, the key is on, condenser wire disconnected. I'm unplugging and plugging and unplugging and plugging and unplugging and plugging to make sure I get it squarely in there. Every time I plug this in, this test light should light and go out light and go out and the injector should click. If the test light lights and goes out, I know therefore we have either a bad fuel pump connection or a bad fuel pump. That's all there is to it. Or the ground lead at the firewall just behind this relay board is not making connection. If the, if the test light does not light and you know these relays are good and the test light still does not light, you have one of the rare conditions where your relay board is bad, but that is one in uh, 10,000 that that would be the problem. By now, you should have been able to solve and diagnose your problem and know what's going on. In an extreme case, 
you can actually jump the, the uh, fuel pump relay between these two terminals. That will run the fuel pump all the time if you are actually desperate, but I don't advise you to do that because we could, you could cause other complications. Finally, I want to show you just a few handy things to keep around in case you run into the non-running fuel pump or car dying on the side of the interstate, etc. Very important to have a 12 volt test light that you know works. We don't need a voltmeter, that's over analyzing it. A simple test light does the trick. Then extra fuses, 25, 16, and 8 amp. A wire with alligator clips on either side. For example, if you're going to ground the head temperature sensor, very, very easy to eliminate that from the circuit with a nice alligator clip with a wire, say two feet in between, good enough. And then the relay board diagram for those who really want to study the different wire colors. They're always the same in all the Porsches and where they plug in and how they go. This is extremely handy and it also shows the circuiting here. This is readily available online or in the original factory manual in color. The later factory manuals weren't in color. So we often, for our mechanics, we uh, copy the piece and give it to them for reference when they're troubleshooting. Well, that concludes the tour of the factory 914 relay board. And this is George Hussey, Dr. 914 from Automobile Atlanta, and thanks for watching.